Hey guys, what's up? My name's Christian Hubbard for AETutsPlus.com, and I was recently on Philip Bloom's website where I saw a post by James Miller talking about this idea of lens whacking. After seeing some of his results, I gave it a try myself. Now I've learned a lot, and I thought I'd share what I found with you. All right, so you know those cool light leak effects you always see? We see light sort of blooming into the shot. Lens whacking is a way to get a similar effect in a much cheaper, and I think cooler way. Here's an example. If you want to see some more examples, check out James Miller on Vimeo. So the first thing you're going to need is a camera, naturally. A Canon 5D will work best because of its full frame, but any crop sensor camera like a Canon T2i or a 7D will work great too. But make sure you have the body cap handy, as this will keep the sensor safe any time that you set the camera down. Secondly, we're going to need a lens. Now, choose wisely because your lens is going to affect your entire look. You're going to want to use a manual focus lens and make sure that A, it's not a Canon FD mount lens, and that B, the lens mount is smaller than the mount for your camera. I recommend using old Nikon or M42 mount glass because of how well they fit. Now, for lens length. The length of your lens is going to affect the bloominess of your light. For the 5D, you're going to want to stick to a, a 50 millimeter lens, and if you're using a crop sensor, a 30 millimeter will work best. Also, try to stick to prime lenses with low apertures. Something that I've found will help your lens whacking exponentially is any type of fixed viewfinder for the back of your camera. You can use any brand, but right here I'm just using a cheap carry speed viewfinder that I found on eBay for around $30. Now that we've got our DSLR and we've got our lens, what's next? Well, before you start, make sure that you've got your lens focused to infinity and use the lowest aperture setting possible on your lens. For me, that's a 2.8, but I recommend using as low as 1.4. Now, if you think your lens is too soft wide open, stop it down. However, I wouldn't recommend going down more than a stop or two. So next, you're going to hold the camera underneath with the palm of your left hand and above with your right hand, keeping your right hand's thumb on the record button. Now, make a U shape with the thumb and pointer finger of your left hand, keeping the lens balanced in that cradle. You're going to use the cradle you've created to manipulate your lens. Turn your fingers back and forth in order to rotate your lens horizontally and use your wrist to angle the lens up and down on the vertical axis. This, in cooperation with a little extra distance from the body, is going to provide us with that light leaking effect. Additionally, this technique allows you to cheat a tilt focus effect by bending the focal plane of your lens. So that's a good general overview that should get you started. But here are some key points to remember as you're shooting. One, pulling the lens closer to the body will increase the distance of your focal plane, and pushing the lens away from the body will bring your focal plane closer. Due to this, as you pull the lens away from the body, you're going to have to move towards your subject in order to keep them in focus. Two, the angle that you tilt your lens will affect where your blooms will occur. If you tilt your lens to the right, you're going to have blooms on the right-hand side, and if you tilt your lens to the left, you're going to have blooms on the left-hand side. Additionally, using a smaller lens will give you more control and cause less fatigue over the course of your shoot. Three, when you're shooting, try to focus on one thing at a time and avoid camera movement like panning or tilting. Also, be sure to get nice long shots of your subject. Because you're shooting handheld, this will help ensure that you get your shot free of that shaky camera movement. Four, Using an EF lens on a crop sensor will give you the most leniency for your tilt shift effect. Now, by this I mean you can tilt the lens more before you see the lens barrel in your shot. Okay, so that's just about everything basic you need to know for lens whacking. Now go out and give it a try yourself. Here are some more examples that I shot myself while learning.
For now. 